Well, it's easy to assume that the rich inherit their money without earning it, but in reality, under 15% of top income earners inherit their wealth, while more than 40% of lower income earners inherit theirs. So, how does the rich really make their money? How do they do it today? How do they do it in the past? By hard work, that's the conclusion. Wealthy households tend to have four times the amount of full-time workers than poorer households. Here to break down those numbers as he did with the National Review. In his column is National Review correspondent Kevin Williamson. Kevin, you discovered that the rich are actually uh, more hard workers than inheritors? Uh, well, yeah, they tend to be employed in very, very high numbers. If you look at wealthy households in the United States, they're almost exclusively made up of married couples who both uh, work full time. On the other end of the spectrum, if you look at the poorest 20 percent of households, uh, they have fewer than one half of a full time worker per household on average. Uh, rich Americans, on average, inherit about 15 percent of their wealth and the rest of it is earned income. So how has the notion is sust been sustained then that if you're rich, you're just sort of sitting on money that you're not earning, not working hard, lazy, in fact, just sort of rolling mm. in cash? Sure. Well, if your political agenda is to loot a certain segment of the population, it's easier to do that if you can convince the world that they haven't earned their money. Not their fault. Yeah. Americans have a very sort of uh, egalitarian attitude about these sorts of things. We don't really want to tax people who earn their money. Uh, very much. But when it comes to people who have inherited, who have unearned income, it's easier to do it. So the left and the Democrats have really tried to cultivate this falsehood on that subject. And you said that uh, the caricature of rich Americans, of children of privilege who inherited a fortune, spend the day shuttling between mansions, is really from the minds of people like Elizabeth Warren and Robert Reich. You think they're hurting the cause uh, in American society? Yeah, I think they're intentionally misleading people about the nature of the American economy. Uh, what's really driving inequality isn't so much inherited money, it's uh, marriage. Uh, compared to, say, the 1950s, early 1960s, a wealthy man today is much, much more likely to be married to a high-income woman than they were back then. So if you're someone who makes $100,000 a year, $200,000 a year, it's very likely you have a spouse who's in roughly the same income bracket. And that's really driven a lot of the difference in income and, and net worth. So you are, I mean, what we found, too, and from your, your study here, the, the highest income um, earners, only 13 percent of them are not working. Yeah, right? uh, they tend to be um, employed in very, very high numbers. That's, I mean, that's the main difference between high-income households and low-income households, is that high-income households tend to be made of people who are in full-time jobs. This isn't to say that people who are on the other end of the spectrum are lazy. It's to say that the job market stinks for people at the low end of the skill spectrum and at the low end of the income spectrum. Uh, but what's really keeping low-income people poor is simply lack of jobs. About 70% of the people in the poorest 20% of households just don't work. How do you explain the income and disparity that the president seems to be emphasizing right now, that the rich got richer and the poor are getting poorer? Uh, well, over the long term, that's not <clears throat> exactly true. If you look at the IRS data about actual households, you'll find that... Uh, that doesn't back up what the president's saying. Now, if you look at how much money it takes to be in the top 1% or top 10%, sure, that's, that's gone up over time, but that's just sort of a natural consequence of having larger markets and, uh, and more people participating in them worldwide. All right, uh, if you want the details, and I know you do, go to Kevin Williamson's column on the National Review. Kevin, thanks for getting up today. Thank you. The snow couldn't keep you down. Not at Never all. Does. All right. <laughs> thanks, Kevin.